International News Review. And we're so happy to have with us today Juliana Chan, who is the CEO of Wild Type Media. Good morning. Hey, Glenn. Thanks for having me in your studio today. Oh, it's so great to have you with us. And you know, let me just adjust uh, you here. Neil, Thank congrats you. on your book tour. Thank you. Very kind. Now, before we get into the review, just briefly, because it's a fascinating story, tell us what you're up to. All right. So uh, where do I begin? I'll tell you that I was a professor in a medical school in Singapore. In 2018, I left to start my own company. Mm -hmm. says I'm a science media entrepreneur and my company is called Wild Type Media. So I've been running it for about four and a half years now and we've grown to about uh, 30 packs across Asia. Fantastic. Mainly in Singapore. Fantastic. Nice. Nice. And and you you have done a lot of things. You you're a keynote speaker, you you know you author articles, you do all the sorts. What is the most interesting thing about what you're seeing in the media landscape with the types of projects you've been working on? Well, when I began this, so I, I started as a blogger for a magazine that I created called AsianScientist.com. Mm -hmm. And in those days, print was, was quite a big thing. We could get lots of advertising, inserts. And as uh, this was 2011, so I've been doing this for maybe 11 years, but full-time five years. Yeah. So I've seen a transition, of course, to websites, you know, blogspot.com. There were lots of bloggers. These days, nobody blogs anymore. Mm -hmm. They've more, all moved onto the platforms. Yeah. And then you know, you can see platforms spring from nowhere. So we have now Instagram, we have TikTok. Um, and after that, I think there's an, another shift now to even deep platforming. So people are saying they don't want the platforms to have all their information. They're going to start newsletters and contain all the, hmm. the emails. Hmm. So they're going to be their own platform. So I've, I've seen a, a little bit of a transition. Now, yeah. I know you do a lot of work on LinkedIn, Yes. and many, many of our listeners and viewers use and read LinkedIn. Now, I make a lot of fun of LinkedIn, please, please because I think to, a lot of the... It's a bit corny sometimes. I, well, corny is an understatement. I mean, <laughs> some of those, some of the posts and the way they segue into making it back about them, hilarious, yeah. you know, and it could be literally anything. I saw a leaf blowing in the sky. <laughs> Which reminded me of and the time And it reminded that me I... of the time when I did a <laughs> keynote speech. If you need a keynote speaker... Come to me. You know, there's no, there's no segue they cannot, you so, know, find or make. So what are your, what, what would be one of your key tips for so, our listeners so, on LinkedIn? So before I get to the tips, I'm not here to give tips. I'm just saying, you know, we were chatting earlier about a page you should all follow. It's called Best of LinkedIn, mm. which you can find on Instagram or, or LinkedIn or Twitter. And that's all the funny stuff that people post on LinkedIn. They screenshot it and they, they black out the names. Yeah. So yeah that's fabulous. pretty funny. Fabulous stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, let's get on to our international news review, uh, Juliana. And um, um, I wanted to have you on because, you know, you're so you're so plugged into what's happening in Singapore, you know, a daughter of Singapore. Uh, and um, with Steve uh, Oaken, our, our normal contributor, uh, being, well, I don't know how normal he is, but I'll say <laughs> usual contributor. Um, hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Um, we wanted to get your, your take on, on a few, you know, international things and more local things that are happening around Singapore. And the first thing we want to talk about today is the the G20 talks in Bali, right? This is huge. Um, Minister Lawrence Wong is there as an observer. Uh, only a few non-member um, uh, countries are able to do that, and he is there right now. And the uh, finance minister of Indonesia, who is sort of chairing the meeting, has been on everybody about, hey, we got to get prices under, you know, under uh, under control. We've got to get supply chains under control. The war in Ukraine is is messing a lot of stuff up uh, globally, not just in Europe, obviously. So when you look at what's happening in Bali as a Singaporean, you know, how, first of all, it's a re it's an international conference in the region, which is a great thing for the region. But what, what what sort of thoughts come to your mind when you when you see what's happening in Bali? Well, you know, when I came on this show, I say I'll talk about anything, but soccer politics and here right. i'm talking about politics so <laughs> well soccer straight after <laughs> so, so i'll be out by then so I, i'm just going to make a joke first you know i think that if my job you know as a ceo of my own company doesn't work out i know what's the next job i'm going to do and i'm going to be a diplomat ah nice. you know why why because basically if i do not like what i'm hearing i'm just going to stand up and walk out of the room <laughs> fair enough which, which is basically what the russian foreign minister did when yeah. he I guess they paid him to fly on a jet to come to Bali and then listen for something that did not make sense to him. 
you know, stand up and clear his calendar and go for just for walk. a shopping spree or a yeah, massage. Go you know? to the beach or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So so that's that's basically what the take home message for me from G20. <laughs> is that good enough? But there is, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but there is an interesting point here, Glenn, isn't there? That um, the Ukraine conflict isn't going away, and it is having a huge impact on supply chains, as you mentioned, yeah. and on food on food prices. Uh, inflation, obviously. Never mind the human tragedy. Yeah, of course, of course. But unfortunately, right? yeah. as you know, it's yeah. for it to affect close to home, it has to affect the wallets uh, close to home, which it is currently. But I look at this G20 talks in Bali. I, I, I don't see a get out here. I don't see an end game. The, the war isn't going to stop. Putin isn't going to stop. That We, we know that. Um, so where are we? We're, we're, at, we're at a bit of a, a stranglehold, a stalemate almost. We, we mm. can have these diplomatic talks in the G20. We can have these meetings in Bali. But unless something geopolitically shifts in the Ukraine sometime soon, and it won't, it's just a lot of talk, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, the French, the German, the American, and other diplomats um, all very uh, openly and, and vocally criticized Russia's representative at the G20 meeting, which, which frankly doesn't happen very often, right, that they really open up on one of their own, if I can put it that way. Um, and so... But you're right. I think there is a certain amount of cynicism when we look at these meetings or when we look at the ASEAN meetings. You know, what are they really doing about uh, the Rohingya crisis or what's happening uh, more broadly in, in Myanmar, for example, um, on the ASEAN side? Uh, so it's hard to see what the end game is like you say, for many of these conferences. Well, this is an interesting point. I don't know. I just caught wind of this yesterday. I don't know if you've been across this I wouldn't say spat, but this uh, diplomatic debate that's been playing out in Singapore between our friend of the show, Kishore Mabubani, have you heard about this? And uh, Tommy Coe and the British High Commissioner, uh, uh, Miss Owen, who's also a friend of the show, got involved. And this idea that uh, Kishore made the point that European nations need to apply a certain level of pragmatism when dealing with these leaders and maybe accept the fact that um, a compromise should now be reached and settle. Whereas uh, Singapore, specifically, Tommy Coe and others, and the British High Commission said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We either respect sovereignty and borders or we don't. So I don't know what you've, if you've been following this, yeah, but this yeah. thing has been playing out in Singapore. It's a fascinating discussion. Yeah. Uh, on the one hand, you've got Kishore Mabubani saying, you, we need some pragmatism here and, and Ukraine needs to settle. And then you've got Tommy Coe and others saying, whoa, that puts a country like Singapore in a very vulnerable position. We either respect borders, sovereignty, independent nation states, or we don't. And that's a real problem. And this is why Singapore has always come out strongly against any nation that's invaded another one, uh, you know, because of these border disputes, especially in Ukraine, right? Uh, the Singapore Foreign Ministry was one of the first countries to condemn it. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Vivian Balakrishnan, he made re a very strong statement at the start of the, the invasion, so I thought that was uh, unprecedented. Yeah, mm -hmm. because you never know when the next one is going to happen, right, Absolutely. and who it's going to happen to. And if it happens here, you know, Singapore government would certainly want the international community on the side of Singapore, right? Um, and and I don't, I have not talked to Kishore about this. Maybe we'll get him on the show. Yeah, I think and so. Have talk about. It. He's been on the show many times. We 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 really enjoy having Kishore on. Yeah, I mean, um, why not? It'd be great. Yeah, he's, I know Kishore. He's, he's a smart guy. I mean, he's he doesn't yeah. say things without thinking about it. And I'm and I'm guessing what's behind that comment is, you know, his thirty plus years as a diplomat um, is realpolitik, right? Which is you may want Boris, uh, sorry, you may want um, um, Putin. Putin to you know pull everybody out and capitulate tomorrow but reality is it's not going to happen and we've seen already with the sanctions and stuff as hard as they are and with the weapons going into ukraine from the west to combat the russians it still isn't stopping the russians so where does that leave you you know fight on forever or do you make another mm avenue to try to solve it yeah i see I'm the guessing point that's but, what kishore is getting at yeah right? we don't want to put words into his mouth but uh let's get him on let's, let's get, get him on. on i think yeah. we should get him on That's absolutely very interesting yeah but uh, anyway so we'll see what happens with this g20 they haven't issued the normal usually they issue communiques and all that sort of stuff and they haven't done that yet because they, they didn't able even agree take a, they didn't even take a group photo <laughs> They usually take a customer. You know, they always have the stupid shirts on. Yes, the country, they're you know, whatever they're yes. hosting. And yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, they they all look so silly, in, in my opinion. 
but yeah, they haven't done that this time either. So uh, I, I'm guessing it's not going to be a hugely successful mm. outcome to the conference, uh, no matter how much. You got to Photoshop all of them in a row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So Juliana wants to be an ambassador. Anybody listening from MFA, uh, Juliana's ready. With to, the caveat that she to just work. wants to turn up and walk out. Yeah. yeah. And walk out whenever. Can she you needs. imagine if I went to a client meeting and I didn't like what I heard? <laughs> Just stood up and walked out, you know, shook and fired, you know. That's it. Right away. Uh, That's it. I would love to see that. I would love to see. You got to bring Neil and I along with you, you know, just yeah. so your support just practice crew. Practice all We'll, we'll set you up. We'll set you up so you could just walk out. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now our last two stories. I want to talk about the best of Singapore and the worst of Singapore. Right. Mm. So let's go with the best first. Um, uh, Maximilian Mader, Singaporean, has won the World Sailing Youth. Uh, championship again for kiteboarding, right? Which is a sport I don't really know much about. No, nope. I've seen it online and whatever, yep. but it's like a little surfboard that's got a, a fin on the bottom mm. of it, right? And you ride above the water. Now this kid is 15 years old, seven consecutive victories. Amazing. This kid, yeah, I mean, he's a rock star in the world of kiteboarding. Absolutely, right? number one. He yep. just became men's world number one for the first time last year. Wonderful. According the to the Streets Times. The best of Singapore. Now, I know you're not a sports person, and <laughs> politics and sports are the two things you didn't want to talk about today. No. But let's talk about what this means for, for the younger generation in Singapore, which I know you think a lot about. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, you know, as a mom of two kids, you know, of course, Singaporean kids, I'm really impressed by any parent, actually, who is raising a international top athlete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a full-time job, seriously. Like, if your kid wants to wake up at 4 to go to the gym, so apparently he picked the sport up at 10. We've had May schooling on a number of times talking yep. about I, I that, heard right? the story about yeah. Joseph schooling. Yep. Apparently when they learned that he was serious when he was on holiday and he woke his parents up at 4 a.m. said he wanted to go to the gym or to the pool. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think the same is going on with Max. So, yeah. you know, kudos to the parents. This is a full-time job. You, there's no cookie cutter, raise, cookie cutter way to raise a top athlete. Mm -hmm. And it also ties in with the news story we had today about the PSLE uh, exam and the fact that 15% uh, of the questions, where's the story say? It's yeah, 15% of the questions yeah. are hard. On are, a given are challenging. Year. I, look, yeah. I'll say this quite openly, um, you know, no false ego. I've seen some of those questions. I couldn't do them. And I'm happy to say that. And oh I think that's, goodness. I think you need to be honest about it. Neil, my, my daughter's in primary three and there are times where we have to screenshot the question, put it on a WhatsApp group, yeah. and have like five adults try to solve it at once. Yeah. I'm not kidding. It's and you need that honesty because sometimes you don't want to lose face. You don't want to be seen as sort of intellectually inferior. But I think we need more people to be honest enough to say, I'm a reasonably intelligent guy. I've got a good academic background, blah, blah, blah. But I've seen some of these PSLE questions. And as a 47-year-old man, A, I cannot answer them. And B, I'm not sure why a 12-year-old kid needs to be able to answer them to get into their secondary school of choice. And if you're trying to balance that kind of pressure, that kind of stress, and try to do what Maximilian has done so spectacularly well, which has become the world sailing youth champion, something's got to give. For every Maximilian, and this is a wonderful, wonderful, uplifting story, do not get me wrong, but... You think about the other 99% who are just trying to get the PSLE done. I mean, something's got to give here, right? Yeah, well, and, and as we all know, it's not enough with the PSLE, and I know we're getting a little off topic. It's not just enough to get the right answer. you got to show how you got the answer, and if you don't show it the right way, of you're course, still going to get points off, boxes, right? You know, these, these Singapore math boxes? Yep. It, you know, I want to talk, Neil, about that, the point you raised about raising athletes in the system. Mm -hmm. I think we have to find a way to help these athletes to thrive outside the systems that we've set up to cater to the majority of kids, you know, because they are so special. We need to bubble wrap these kids and put all our resources behind them because we're not China. We don't have a ping pong school with maybe 100 kids that are chosen for the right arm size or, or 10,000 kids bounds, or whatever. Yeah. And then, you know, spend like 10 years putting them to a regimented program to yeah. select one yeah. athlete to give China the goal in the Olympics. Yeah. We don't have that number of kids. We don't have enough kids to do that. So maybe we need to find a way to help these special kids uh, be successful and maybe find a way for them to excel both in their sports. Oh, we do have the Singapore the Sports education. School. Is that not yes, enough? Yes, yes. Well, I mean, that's, that's pretty much in the high school state. They, they mm. still need to be supported through all the way to, yeah. to wherever they go next. Well, yeah. and, it, and it comes down to the national conversation on what is important to the country. 
is it important to this country or any country to, I have, think it is. to have top class, world class athletes? I think it absolutely is. Right? I think it absolutely is such a, such an inspiration to younger kids. Look at Joseph Schooling. Now there's a whole generation of kids who want to be swimmers. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, the grandstand at Sixth Avenue at Bukit Timah, which is one of the biggest sporting locations in Singapore, is earmarked for development next year. <laughs> so that probably tells you where our priorities are. Yeah, good luck. Go find a go find a soccer pitch somewhere. Go find else, a kids. soccer pitch, a rugby pitch, a cricket pitch, yeah. a gymnastics court, whatever. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, tough, unfortunately. So anyway, Maximilian, congratulations. Yeah, brilliant. I would love to have him on the show too. If anybody knows Maximilian or his parents, get in touch with us. And, and connect us because we would love to have him on the show to, to talk wow, about yes. his wonderful yes. win as well. And, and on that point, I'm just reading here, Glenn. I mean, the guy pulled off seven consecutive <laughs> victories. I mean, this is no mean feat. You know, seven consecutive victories to regain the lead. And he's now a world champion. I mean, we have a world champion. This is fantastic. Under 19, superb. Yep. And superb. He's, he's doing it in the Netherlands. He's not at yep. home with the hometown crowd. Jury yep. him. He's, he's off on his own. So but just competing at the highest level. So Glenn, I read that he's homeschooled. I think that's also another pressure on the yeah. parents. They need to, you know, maybe one of the parents has to do, look after him full time and take mm. him to training and teach him yeah. at home. So yeah. that's in, that's really hard on the parents too. Sacrifice. Mm. Another friend of mine, a Singaporean, doing exactly the same, homeschooling, because it's the only way they said they could balance his academic work with his sporting aspirations. Interesting. Uh, yeah, the, the the boy does that. Um, what is that thing they do at Sentosa? You know, by the beach station where they float. Oh right, right, yeah. The, oh, the, uh, um, the the flying dive, the diving thing, the in, in indoor diving, um, indoor sky 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 indoor sky, sky diving sky thing. Yeah, 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 with a big fan underneath. That. That's the one. Right. He similarly That's a competitive take, sport now. It is. He yeah. takes part in World Junior Championships yeah. just like Maximilian. Same issue. Awesome. Uh, has to homeschool because to balance the two. Very I remember difficult. reading about another young girl. I think her name is Kyra. She's also one of uh, one of the you know biggest names in that sport as well. Yeah, yeah right. Mm. Yeah, oh, interesting. Okay, so now we got to close out with the worst of Singapore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is, oh God, I don't want to go there. That's crazy, and maybe we don't have to spend too much time <laughs> on it. But this crazy couple that gets out of their car at the causeway at the second link, they have been arrested by the Malaysian police. They Mother were and son identified and and, and arrested um, after they had a a bump a bump with a, a bump and a scrape with another car um and and by the way i'll just say that I, i'm not saying that everybody is completely guilty or innocent in right. this in this thing because we all know how crazy drivers get at the border and how they're always trying to cut change lanes and get ahead and all that mm. right so i don't know about this black the black car that was the car that had its license tag ripped off I don't know what their culpability in this is, <laughs> but I would imagine there was some culpability, right? But the response is was ridiculous, right? Mm. People stop pulling their car over, stopping, getting out, ripping off a license plate, trying to stop the car. What do we do with this mentality, Julianne? We see it every day on and varying shades of gray, right? So, you know, I want to talk about what you just said about so this is an example of what happens when you put someone in a confined space. <laughs> the lab rats. Hours. You know, I'm not only talking about cars, I'm talking about aeroplanes, you know, circuit breaker, two, two months. If you, does anyone remember or did you just try to re forget that entirely? Yeah. It, it makes people go nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then, of course, you're inching forward like a, an inch a minute, and then some, suddenly someone tries to cut you off, apparently. You know, you go crazy when that happens. You do. You really do. Do you sometimes, I mean, I'm not the first person to say this, but I, I'd be interested to get your thoughts on it, that there is, because cars are so prohibitively expensive Yes, here, I was going to talk about that. Right? There is some, t not better people than I have said this, academics have researched this, that there's an air of entitlement that comes with the whole, my grandfather's road. I've bought this car. It's cost me 100000 plus. For the paper. For the paper. Therefore, I have yeah. certain rights and privileges and entitlements, and I'm going to use them in certain ways on the road. Do you think there's anything to play there? There's a certain... Yeah. You know, you know, uh, Neil, I want to talk about a special kind of Singapore road rage. Okay. And that's called COE road rage. Right. Because we are angry at the paper, see? Right. So, uh, so, so uh. Then, then, then when someone actually apparently cuts you or scratches your car, you know, it's literally war. Because maybe that scratch or that dance could cost you a couple of thousand dollars yeah. right away to fix it. Yeah. So, you know, that's our special kind of road rage. Yeah. What do we do? You know, Neil and I were just talking, we were both on holiday mm -hmm. and had very um, different experiences than the Singapore driving experience, right? People letting us in. Right. You know, I was in Hawaii, he was in the UK. 
um, you know, people slowing down, people shifting to the side to make room for you. The Kiasu mentality in Singapore is well known and documented for, you know, hundreds of years, a couple hundred years almost. How do we get that, how do we change that mindset where everybody is the lab rat in the cage and is just so stressed out? So, so how, you know, where does it start? So I, I think I think uh, I cannot speak for an entire nation. Or, of course. But what I can say about this situation and in my daily life is that you you I don't know why they had to cross over the Hari Raya weekend, which is the peak of travel. Mm. So for example, on a daily basis, imagine if you could wake up like thirty minutes earlier, get into your car, and not get into a really stressful jam with everyone, you would find that, you know, there is less stress on the road, there's less rage yeah. on the road, yeah. and it will be better for your mental health. Yeah. So I think I'm just speaking about traffic here. If we could just change our behavior a little bit, of mm. course, working from home solves it entirely, then you have less of that congestion on the road, which is what the COE was intended to prevent anyway. Yeah. You know? It is interesting. I mean, your point, of, you know, traveling across the causeway during the Harry Wire period, during public holidays, it's not a fun experience anyway. Do, so, do you have to do that at that particular time? Yeah, if you, look, if it's a family situation, we understand. If you have to go across, you're seeing family and friends or whatever, absolutely fine. Uh, but no, I agree with you. If you can make that time, if you can make that extra time so you don't have to rush, so you don't have to stress, and you don't have to cut yeah. in to every single space and gap that you find, it would make the whole process just a lot more <sighs> relaxed. More zen, right? You know, I want to talk about a story that was missed perhaps in this whole debacle because there was the son of the black Toyota car and he, was, he spoke to the Straits Times and he said that he wanted the public to stop harassing the mom and son who were arrested. This story you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. He, he's the son of the black, of the, of the black car driver. The black car, right. Mm. And, and this is despite his parents and his two sisters being in that car that was had <laughs> being the, responsible had, had for the it. car plate ripped off from, you know. <laughs> he could have simply played the victim and said, my family is distressed, but he chose to be the mature one in this story. I think he's the most mature individual in this entire uh, a little too, story. A little too late though, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but I did feel, Glenn, I don't know what you thought, but as someone who's been trolled myself in the past, mm. uh, and it's something you cannot control, I am not condoning the actions in any way, but two things. One, they haven't been found guilty of anything yet. They've been judged guilty by social media. They still have to go to court. The court of so public on. opinion. I, we see what we can the, see the with our own eyes. Does say yeah. quite however, a bit. however, the naming and shaming it's, it's exactly. something, I think it's getting a little out of hand now. Just let the courts deal with it. I mean, the, 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 this thing has not just gone viral. It's exploded in its virality. You know, it's gone all over the world. So whatever punishment they get from the courts of law, if there is any, I'm not sure we'll even get close to the kind of social media punishment they've already had. Everybody knows what that woman looks like. Everybody just, knows. Just what like the sovereign woman, right? Yeah. From the from the food court when she wouldn't wear the mask her mask. Lady, yeah. The mask lady. Yeah. So yeah. if there's anything to learn from this, right. if, you, if you're going to, and I've done this, I have done this, I've gone for the handle on my car, I've gone to step out, and my wife has gone, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Cameras. Thank don't. God for your Thank wife, God for, Don't. For your and wife. she's right. She's absolutely yeah. right. There's that, nothing to be gained. That five, even if it's justified, even if you're Mr. Righteousness, that five-second outburst can live with you forever. You know, so yeah, don't do it, people. Don't be, don't do it. Stay we, in the car. We got to leave it there. Juliana Chen, thank you so much for being with thank us you, today. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Neil. Thank you.